Good evening, saints and friends. Thank God for this opportunity again to come before you and to uh, just give you a little brief word um, tonight. And then we're going to close out in prayer. Thank you for joining us. If you don't mind, please uh, do me a favor um, and do our ministry a favor by sharing um, this uh, broadcast. And uh, of course, you can add whatever comments you may have in the comment section. Come on, let's bow our heads together tonight as we pray and prepare ask God to prepare our hearts for the word. Father, we thank you again in Jesus' name for giving us this signal honor and shared opportunity to come together around your word. Um, it seems as if we can't get enough of it. We're still hungry and we're still thirsty. So Lord, feed and fill us until we're satisfied. Use me, O oh God, as an instrument in your hand. We pray, God, that you'll help me to speak as your oracle, uh, communicating the ambiguities of your word, making them clear and plain. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. All right, we're going to take a little shift tonight, um, moving away from um, our previous Bible study on the church and social justice, and we're going to go back to what we were talking about uh, prior to that. And that, again, surrounds uh, our need to be stubborn about our spirituality and to understand the importance of um, not only worshiping God, but, but living a life of worship, all right? If you have your Bibles tonight, I want you to first turn with us to uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 37. That's 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 37. Again, the idea um, that we want to drive home tonight um, of course, that we are uh, we are supposed to live a life where we worship God. The question is, how do we demonstrate that life, or what should that life look like? Um, in what ways uh, are we to express um, our uh, reverence and appreciation for God? Okay, and let me tell you that in light of what we're going through. Well, I should say, in light of all that we go through, not just this time, but always, excuse me, it is important that our, our worship of God, please write this down, be perpetual. That our worship of God would be perpetual. All right? In First Chronicles uh, chapter 16, verse 37, you will see there um, how uh, David leaves Asaph and others and his family um, with the Ark of the Covenant of God. And the Bible says that they continually uh, worship the Lord. Um, it is that, uh, or regularly, excuse me, worship the Lord. And uh, so again, worship has got to be perpetual. We, when, when the verse uh, says, verse 37, when it says that Asaph uh, and the others worship God regularly, um, it, means to, it means to worship God continually without interruption, continually without interruption. I know some of you saying, well, I got a job <laughs> or whatever. Um, I got responsibilities. How is it actually possible for one to worship God continually without interruption? Again, we're talking about living a life of worship, that worship becoming a part of your life, all right? Um, the same idea of regularly or continually without interruption it's also in the New Testament. There's many scriptures, actually, but I just want to give you two tonight. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15, again, uh, the whole idea of coming before the Lord on a regular basis, on a continual basis, without interruption. Uh, I'm giving an example. Now, again, I said facetiously, how is it possible for someone to worship God um, without interruption? Well, again, um, I, I don't know if I'm literally implying that 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you are to be totally detached from any other um, interests and responsibilities and focus uh, on God. Um, I don't know how you're gonna live that way. Um, but what I am suggesting is, is that again, that our, our regular worship with God must continue without interruption, all right? And now for, in order for this to happen, please write these down. I'm not gonna keep you long. Please write these down. Number one, it's going to require that you make a decision. You, you and I have got to make a choice that I'm going to and you're going to 
worship God continually without interruption. I'm not going to let nothing get in my way. And I promise you, as soon as you say that, look like everything going to get in your way. But you've got to make that decision. Number two, um, it requires discipline. All right? First of all, nothing is going to happen if you don't make a choice. And secondly, nothing's going to happen if you don't commit to the choice that you make. You have to be disciplined. All right? Whatever that may mean. Uh, for me, it's about putting uh, alarms and timers, as it were. Um, I use my phone now, of course, um, to make sure that, you know, that I stop and pause regularly. Amen. That I don't let nothing get in the way. Certain times during the day, I, I got to be before the Lord. I mean, I just, you know, um, and nothing may be going on. I mean, nothing in that particular moment may be, may be pressing, but I know me. I know that if I don't um, uh, create a space, set a time, um, I ain't going to do nothing. I'm going to talk about what I'm going to do, but I'm not going to do anything. And so that, that's very important. we got to make sure that, um, uh, um, that we uh, are disciplined. And what, for you, whatever that takes. For me, it's about putting alarms again on my phone to alert me to where, okay, you got to pause here. This is where you said today you are going to pray or you are going to worship or whatever the case may be or spend time with the Lord. Because if I don't do it, um, it's a wrap. All right, so you got you got you got to make a decision. You got to be uh, disciplined, but you have to also be determined. All right, all right. What 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 am I what do I mean by that? Again, to um, give God perpetual worship or regular worship that continues without interruption. You and I have got to be determined that that space is not disrupted, is not disturbed, is not destroyed by anything that happens to you in life. So you and I are going to have stuff, you know, um, that's going to try to distract us. Well, I shouldn't say that. There are going to be things that if we let it, it will distract us, all right, um, and keep us from worshiping God. You know, you anything can happen within the course of a day. You know, just, uh, you can be depressed about something. There can be something, some emergency, some danger that's happening in your life. There can... You can have just experienced defeat, and all these things set you back, you know, have the potential to set you back spiritually. And um, and you feel like, I can't make it, I can't go on. Can I tell you that worship is not only for those moments when it, things seem to be um, going your way or things seem to be lining up. Worship is to be done no matter what. If things are lining up in your life, great. If things are, are just falling apart, you are still, listen, if you're going to give God the kind of worship that is appropriate, it must be regular. It must be continued without interruption. Nothing should get in our way to keep us from worshiping God. All right? I want you to write this down. Please write this down. Amen. That this perpetual worship, number one, listen, is to decide that my reverence for God will determine and if necessary defeat the reality of my experience. All right? I'll say it again. If not, you can replay it so you can get it and write it down. Put it on a piece of paper. All right? My worship, excuse me, my reverence for God will determine and, if necessary, defeat the reality of my experience. There are times of charm. It's my choice. It's my determination. Amen. That my reverence for God will determine or define, if you will, and if necessary, defeat the reality of my experience. I'm going to let my reverence of God frame my life. This is, we're talking about living a life of worship. Stuff is going to happen, but how you perceive it makes a big difference. And when you worship God, you get a perspective about your life experience that you could not have otherwise obtained. Your worship of God, your reverence for God, again, it frames, as it were, your perspective about the reality of your experience. 
Amen. Um, and, and this is very, very important. Um, it, it, uh, it helps you to see and understand from God's point of view um, the things that you're going through. All right? Because, because let me tell you something. If you, if, if you don't do this, then the reality of your experience is going to decide and determine. Amen. And sometimes you're not careful. It will defeat your reverence for God. If, if you don't do it in the way I first stated, the opposite will happen. And this is what you and I don't want to happen. We want to make sure, amen, that my reverence for God determines, decides, if you will, explains um, the reality of our experience. Okay, so worship number one has got to be perpetual. Number two, worship must be proclaimed. Our worship of God must be proclaimed. All right? It has to be expressed. And uh, all of this, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Well, anyway, let me just say it this way. Everybody says that they have, you know, I just, I have this internal expression of worship of God. I'm not... Um, uh, you know, an extrovert. Um, I, I, you know, it's it's in, it's inside. It's quiet. Uh, well, I don't know what to say about that to say, except to say what I'm getting ready to say, <laughs> and that is, again, that your worship has got to be proclaimed. All right, write this, write these two passages down, please. First one is First Chronicles again, chapter sixteen, but. The, the preceding verses, verses 7 through 36, all right? And then 2 Chronicles, chapter 29 and verse 30. So that's 1 Chronicles 16, verses 7 through 36. And then 2 Chronicles, chapter 29 and verse 30, all right? So, again, in those passages, it, it talks about how Asaph, um, expressed um, his worship for God, um, you know, in line and in addition to um, his responsibilities given to him uh, by David King. Um, this is how he expressed it, all right? And he expressed it not only as an individual, but he expressed it ultimately as a worship leader. Um, so, you know, a life of worship is to lead worship, all right? Or is to, is to function as a worship leader. Um, um, when you think about the people around you, um, people connected to you, as it were, uh, what is our role? Of course, we, we worship God. Um, our worship is unto God, but our worship is also for those who are around us. Okay, so we function as a worship leader. Well, how will they know we are a worshiper without our worship being proclaimed? Right, it's a worship that must be proclaimed. What, what, right, and this is, this is, um, you don't have to receive uh, the following as an extensive list or an exhaustive list, but it is just to help us focus. One of the things that Asaph did uh, was that he wrote. He was told by, he, he wrote songs. And we know that it, when we look at the history of Asaph, that initially he was given songs by David. Um, but as time evolved, by the time we get to Second Chronicles chapter 29, he's writing songs himself, okay? So, so how can I say this, that we are introduced to worship, you know, in time from other people, but at some point, it has got to get to a place where we express, amen, our individual worship, um, and, and not just uh, having uh, what it means to worship God handed off to us by others. We got to in turn do the same thing and pass worship uh, over um, to others as well. So, so, so he wrote songs, so that, that's one way to express it. In other words, um, his worship was um, sequential. His worship um, started as a journal. Please write this down. It was seminal. Um, it was lyrical. It was choral. Um, he wrote the songs out. Okay? That's one way to do it. Um, some people think, you know, uh, well, again, we think of, of, of the proclamation of worship um, to only be one way. Um, but it, it's, it's, we're going to see, I'm going to give you three anyway. There, there are many ways, but there are at least three. So this sequential journaling, um, this seminal, lyrical, choral expression of, of worship, you know, sometimes you got to write it out, what, when you, what you feel about God, 
and what you know about God, what you are learning about God. Um, sometimes you got to write it out. All right. All right. The second, second way that Asaph expressed his worship was instrumental. Here's the kicker. Um, and we know the Bible clearly tells us that our worship of God ought to be expressed uh, instrumentally. Um, but, but Asaph was an instrumentalist. His, his, his instrument of choice was, was the symbols. There are passages in, in the Old Testament where it refers to him playing them loudly, playing them, proclaiming, uh, playing the symbols loudly. Um, we know that the entire worship team of, of which Asaph was a part was more than a percussion section. Uh, but, but again, same time, um, the idea is that there is this instrumental proclamation. We let everything that have breath, right? Praise them on the symbols, high sound the symbols, um, the lyre, the harp, and the dance, all of that. Uh, we are told that we ought to praise and proclaim the Lord. But again, so you understand, so in this sense, it is, it is, it is heard, all right? It is, it is audible. Um, there it is, the, 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 the banging of the symbols. So we say, well, well, Bishop, I can't play an instrument. I, I'm in the same boat. I can't play. I used to play uh, the alto sax. Don't ask me to play it now. I, I can I can do a little bit. When I say little, I mean very very little. Um, and so, um, to that end, um, don't don't disqualify yourself and say, well, because I can't play an instrument, um, I can't worship God. Well, I'm telling you different ways. All right, you got to find your way. Asaph, it was sequential, it was instrumental, but it was also vocal. All right. It was vocal. Um, and this is the part that we often, you know, associate worship of God as being vocal. Again, it is, it is, it is all three and more. Okay? It has to be proclaimed. Your, again, your worship of God uh, um, is, 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 um, is unto God, but it's, it is for the community. All right? This idea of I'm by myself, I'm, I'm separating, I'm divorcing myself. Um, from others um, and I'm worshiping God alone it's not what God is calling for God is calling for worship to become a communal ex exercise and expression and, your, and, and in this area your connection to others is critical Amen. oh magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name how? together together all right let me go a bit further. Give you a couple more and we're going to go. <clears throat> All right. Worshiping God has, has got to be perpetual. It's proclaimed. It has to also be prophetic. First Chronicles chapter 25 and verse 1. I want you to turn there very quickly. First Chronicles chapter 25 and verse 1. I'm trying to find it again myself because I want to re read it to you. And um, so that we can, it says, <clears throat> yeah. Again, that David and the officers of the army also set apart some of the sons of Asaph, Heman, J Jeduthun, who were to prophesy accompanied by lyres, harps, and cymbals. All right? Again, all right, to worship God is to, is to be prophetic. And this is, um, it's about, how can I say this? It, it's, it, it means to be prophetic in the sense of telling about God, speaking about God. Speaking about God, worship is 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 not is 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 to be proclaimed, but it is a prophetic proclamation. Amen. We speak about God, and I say this, you know, because sometimes when we think about our songs that we sing, that sometimes <clears throat> God may be mentioned in the song, um, uh, but God is not the focus of the song. Sometimes the focus of the song. Maybe what God did for, did for us, something that God did for us, and again it puts us at the center of the song. But uh, and that may be a praise song. I'm praising God what He done for me. But but a prophetic expression of worship is when God is the focus, okay, and um, and we are, we are we are speaking about God, simply about God. It's interesting that there are many people who can tell you what God has done for them, but they can't really tell you about God. 
without taking themselves out of the picture. That their understanding of God is purely um, a, a subjective realization, um, but not necessarily an objective truth. Amen. There, 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 are, there, there was an understanding about God that ain't got nothing to do with you and me. Amen. And, and do you know that about God? Do you know what the Bible says about God? Do you, do, do you have an understanding about God in that way? Um, now, I believe that, you know, our personal testimony is, is a good place to start. It's a good jump-off spot. I mean, I, I tell people about um, what God has done for me, but I ought to grow and mature to the place in my worship life where I can just talk about who God is, you see, and become prophetic uh, in my expression of worship. Colossians 3. Please turn there, Colossians chapter 3. I want to read that to you. This is familiar. That's a familiar one. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. I'm going to find that real quick. Okay, I'm turning my little Bible here. And uh, I don't know why in the world I got a little Bible. I must have lost my mind, bumped my head, getting something small. No, I can't read it. But anyway, uh, Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16 Again, I, I want to read this. It says, let the message about the Messiah dwell richly among you, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom and singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. This really sums up what I've been saying about it being prophetic. All right? Um, again, it's the message about the Messiah. It's the message about God. All right? And when you live a life of worship, it dwells in you to the point that that how can I say that so much of God has been pushed in you to the point that all of God that is in you begins to be pushed out of you, all right? You can't help but talk about God. Talk about God's goodness, God's grace. Come on, amen. God's power, amen, God's glory. It comes out of you whether you want to or not. And when it does, again, the scripture says that it's an opportunity, amen, not uh, for us to teach others, to encourage, to edify other people. Amen. Point people back to God. I feel the Holy Ghost right here because this is a this is a very critical point that I want to drive home. The need uh, for people um, to be directed back to God. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm almost ashamed sometimes that I keep talking about conditions and seasons and what we're in. And listen... Because if if I'm not careful, that can become the primary focus and the main subject, even of my sermonic presentations. When 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 I've got to I've got to be very careful and very intentional about pointing people back to God. I don't care what's going on. We ain't got to talk about what's going on. People can take what's going on, and 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 they can. Uh, get a better understanding of it on their own. We, we need people going to tell them the, the part of, of the truth that is that is uh, that is not being told. We're talking about everything in our society, but not God. In other words, they're talking about the world, the system, our society, our media. They talking about everything. Ain't nobody talking about God. We got to do that. Amen. Our worship is critical. Amen. Don't let the world define uh, for you the reality of your experience. Worship God. Be intentional. Be stubborn about worshiping God. All right? Okay. So, again, and, and also encouraging others to do the same thing. Here's the last thing I want to give you. Um, it's it's the, the fourth one is that uh, our worship... Um, will be positional. Let me go back. Perpetual, has to be proclaimed, must be prophetic, but it will be positional. All right? Um, and, and really, it's about, it's the understanding is about a reposition, a repositioning of yourself. Okay? Worship repositions you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And places you before the throne of God. Amen. Amen. I want to know that the throne of God, the presence of God is near. Amen. Me 
especially at a time in my life when, you know, there may be major upheaval, you know, disruptions, things that are designed to discourage me. I want to know that I can get to that throne. I want to worship. I'm telling you, it repositions you spiritually. It repositions you mentally. Amen. It's, it repositions you, amen, um, in the midst of uh, your, your natural reality. Amen. And uh, it puts you right in the middle of where God is working and what God is doing. And it gets you a, a diff it gives you a different perspective. You're able to see everything now from the Lord's side. Amen. You, you're able to look at life through the lenses of God. And, and, um, and I'm telling you, uh, let, 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 me, let me close with this cause, because uh, so we remember the passage where uh, the servant uh, of the prophet was uh, upset because the enemies had encamped uh, around uh, the tent. And um, but he couldn't see. He, he what he saw was in the natural, but 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 the prophet of God was able to see in the spiritual or in the supernatural. And he saw that even though uh, that that the the army was around the the camp, that between the army and the camp, God had stationed a legion of, of angels, right? And and so he said, Lord, open up the eyes of my servant so he can see what I see. Lord opened up the eyes of the servant. He saw that that the enemy was up in the hills, but between the enemy and them, God has stationed uh, uh, an army of angels. He said, "He said the the army of the enemy, they had chariots of iron." He said, "But the army of angels had chariots of fire." He said, "And there was more with us <laughs> than there was with them." Again, you, you you're not gonna get that perspective, you know. Just thinking things through, you know, musing on your own, you know. No, amen. I don't care how mindful you try to be. You're not going to get that perspective until you worship God, amen, until you reverence God and you make sure, amen, that your reverence for God is going to determine and define, amen, and even reveal the reality of your experience, amen. It rep Worship repositions you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, amen, and puts you again smack dab in the middle of what God is doing. Can I close tonight and tell you God is up to something? God is up to something. He's always been up to something. Amen. That that the intention of God is still uh, coming to fruition. The will of God is still going to come to pass. There was nothing that has happened in the course of this world in our generation, in our lifetime, that has undermined the the the, uh, the the will of God. God's purpose and God's will shall be done. Amen. You got to know it. Amen. I'm telling you, whatever we're going through now is going to pass away. Worship God. And get back on track. Amen. And watch God continue to work in your life. Come on, let's bow our heads together tonight and let's pray. Father, we bless you and thank you for the richness of your word. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us that we, our focus and our attention needs to be on you. Oh, God, we declare even now that all of the problems and pains associated with uh, this season, Lord, they're, going to, they're beginning now to pale in comparison, amen, to your presence and power. Oh, God, you are a present help in a time of trouble. You are available unto your children. You know them that belongs to you. Oh, God, and we thank you, Lord, that you are yet making ways. In fact, what we are praying for and what we, what we are believing for Lord, you've already done it. It is already done in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a perspective that the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus, that everything has been settled, everything has been done, that we are working things through, we're going through a process, we're taking a journey. Oh, God, but you, everything is already settled in heaven, and we give you glory for the same. God bless your people. Encourage their hearts tonight. Even when this broadcast has come to a conclusion, God, give them to no one to understand that what we have shared tonight, if they would just worship God, if they would continue to worship you regularly, continually without any interruption, if they would make up their mind, I'm not going to let anything get in my way. I'm going to, if I've got to schedule it in, if I've got to pencil it in, whatever I've got to do to make a point of worshiping God without interruption, Lord, I'm going to feed my soul with the presence of God. I'm going to become strengthened, Lord, in your presence. And I thank you, Lord, that as they do that, oh God, they will see from your perspective that the enemy has already been defeated. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us because we belong to God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Amen. That those who des desire to take our lives and to, and to ruin and destroy our lives, they are again, in fact, defeated. Greater is he that's within us than he that is within the world. We've already overcome any obstacle, oh God, that has been, will be put in our way as we worship you, oh God, as we reverence you. We will see, Lord, that you have already taken care of everything. And all we've got to do is trust you as we make our way through it. Again, Lord, may this word resonate with us. May it reach every heart is my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for your time tonight. I do want to make mention, um, if, if you still happen to be up, um, but uh, right now, um, our own... Uh, Pastor Kim White um, has a prayer call going on. You're going to have to check um, her, uh, uh, I, I don't want to say Facebook, Instagram page, something. Matter of fact, let me give you something real quick. I think I can do it. And um, But it's a prayer call that's going on now, 6 p.m. to 12 midnight. Uh, yours truly will be on this evening. I'll come on for about 15 minutes, around 11.30, and I'll be praying. Um, but you're invited to pray. Uh, even when this broadcast is over, join at some point um, uh, with our prayer call. Uh, the phone number for the prayer call is 712-775-7031. The access code is 340-912. Again, phone number 712-775-7031. And the access code is 340-912. And that is tonight. Again, it's going on right now. It's been on for 30 minutes. It will continue to midnight. And I'll be on at about 11.30 to 11.45, uh, trying to close out the prayer time. But God bless you. Please join us if you can. And um, we look forward to seeing you on next time. God bless you.